We've been being lied to by tutorials, AI, mass media, and VCs. Look at any market map and you'll see the deception. Vector stores have gained almost as much popularity as language models themselves. Want to create a question and answer bot? Use a vector store. Want to create anything related to text? Use a vector store. Let's break down where this deception lies and the interesting reasons for why it's happening. At the end of the video, I'm going to go over my recommendation for not just how to think about vector stores, but retrieval in general. This video is greatly inspired by Colin Harmon's article on tunnel vision with AI. Check it out if you want to see another take on this. Let's get into it. It's important that you pass relevant information to your language model. So instead of asking ChatGPT, hey, how many vacation days do I have? You'd give it one of your company policies as context and then ask the question. The process of selecting the right information to pass to your language model is a process called retrieval. Humans do it all the time. If I were to ask you what is your favorite band, you're not going to think of Anthony Bourdain or Gordon Ramsay. You're going to think of Blink-182, Taking Back Sunday, or Sum 41. Your brain automatically thinks about the right context and domain for you to make a decision off of. Language models do the same thing. However, a constraint is the amount of information that we can pass to the language model in a single prompt. This means that we need to be very careful and strategic about the right information that we pass over to it. The problem is if we were to take a look at AI mass marketing today, you'd think that vector stores were the only way to do retrieval for your prompts. It's all we see on market maps, news, and the media. This is an issue because it gives developers the wrong idea about the place vector stores have in the development workflow. Too many people try shoehorning vector stores for use cases it's not optimal for. The result is poorly architected products that leaves developers wondering why their application isn't hitting the top page of Product Hunt. LLMs and embeddings are based on the same technology, transformer-based language models. LLMs went on the rise and so did embeddings. What followed was a set of specialized tools that said they were the solution to handle your embeddings for you. This led to the assumption that the sole retrieval mechanism for AI apps was fundamentally different than regular applications. While AI apps will have expanded use cases, this isn't the full picture. Next, all this wouldn't happen if the startups weren't participating themselves. And and they have their own set of incentives. Startups need to stand out from the crowd, and database solutions have been around since computing has been around. So how do you get your voice heard? Well, you need to differentiate, and vector stores are a prime opportunity for startups to latch on and hang on to something new. This helps them not only communicate their position in the market, but also raise cash from VCs. The buzzword vector store is a popular way to signal to the market that you are quote, AI first. Many of the cool Twitter demos that we've seen have vectors at their core, which makes people think that vectors are synonymous with AI in general. VCs have also promoted this point of differentiation as a way for their portfolio of companies to stand out. But we're all humans at the end of the day. I think one of the main reasons why Vector Stores is becoming synonymous with AI is because it's fun to say. And it also makes someone feel smart by saying it. Vector Store, Vector Store, Vector Store, Vector Store. Like developing any tech solution, you need to start with the requirements and constraints at hand. In this case, it depends. What information do you want to retrieve? I get asked all the time how to do vector search over traditional structured data, like customer events or purchases. However, this is the wrong question to ask. If you have a database of customer events, this is a solved problem. Go query your data like you normally would, and then pass that information over to a language model. You may need a language model to turn the user's intent into a structured query but don't try to force vector stores on everything. Vector search is usually good for when your result will come in an unknown form. This usually means around retrieving context, paraphrasing, or doing semantic search, meaning you're searching on meaning rather than the pure words. But keep in mind, you'll be surprised at how far you can get with just regular keyword search, which is practically free. Next time you see a market map with an entire box dedicated just to vector search, I want you to give an eye squint and realize that the world of retrieval is much, much bigger. Vector stores are just one piece of that. I'd love to hear what you think. If you agree, if you disagree, please hit me up on YouTube in the comments or over on Twitter. I'd love to chat. We'll see you later.